Rewind and Digress is a fakechamp.net podcast proudly presented by Viewlorium. Alternative movies, alternative streaming, totally free at viewlorium.com. Welcome to Rewind and Digress, where we hit pause on the now and track back to one of our favourite films, hit the road, stop at a highway rest stop, as you know what they're the breeding ground of, take a detour and end up in Mannequin Heaven. I'm Jarrett, and I'm with Glenn and Sean, and we're FakeShemp.net. On this episode, we're rewinding back to 1979 for writer-director David Schmaller's vastly underrated, somewhat subversive, and completely unsettling Tourist Trap. Gentlemen, how you going? <laughs> Very well. How are you? <laughs> I was waiting for a question. Yeah. I was <laughs> always... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well... Good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now that I know that you're great... I want to know about your first experience with Tourist Trap. <laughs> I'll, I'll cut to Glenn first because I, I have an inkling that maybe this was the first time you saw Tourist Trap. Sure. Yeah, this is the first time. Right, yeah, so yeah, cut yeah. to Glenn. We'll come back to your okay. impression. Oh, uh, fuck. I don't, I don't remember where I was when I first saw it. It was just a, a movie that was always in my bedroom under my bed or something, you know. Excellent. Yeah, but I hadn't watched it in a long time. So right, right. watching it in preparation for this was like a, a yeah. Trip down memory lane. Big time. Really? But I'd forgotten a lot about it too. So. Yeah, wow. Was it like, is it, you sort of saw it when you were a kid or a teenager, you reckon? Or? I would have been, yeah, probably around 10, 11, 12, like around right, that yeah. age, most likely. You know, I was getting into this kind of shit back yeah. then. And and I've written a blog about how um, Charles Band influenced my taste in horror from a very, very early age when I was like three or four. And um, so... Of course, a ghoulies? Ghoulies. <laughs> oh, yeah. That poster? Yeah. yeah. No, the, the, the tagline on the post. The tagline. The, 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 yeah. <laughs> the yeah. brief story is I was watching it with friends and someone told me the tagline was they'll get you in the end. So I ran all the way home and didn't watch the rest of the movie for years. Oh, really? Like it terrified me the fact that these things would fucking get me. Yeah. <laughs> so Charles Band has been a hero of mine and um, that's why I owned it. Just yeah. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is like next level Charles Band. Like it's, it's different. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like when you say if you compare it against the Troma catalogue, it's like looking at Mother's Day even. Yeah. It's like that just really bizarre sort of but it's produced by yep. Charlie Band in that instance Lloyd Kaufman yeah um, Shauno what did you so you, this was the very first time you've seen it yeah movie? yesterday Shauno yeah, yeah Shauno, Shauno. Yeah, just <laughs> throwing it out yeah. there Shauno <laughs> trying it on just to see, see, see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yesterday, yesterday was the first time I watched yeah. it. I, I like, I'm gonna be honest, never even heard of it before. Right, right, right. right? Did you know the poster? No, no, wow. no. Completely just walked into it blank. And That's I awesome. Even, I didn't even bother looking at IMDb until I'd finished it. Yeah, so I, I, I like zero. I have literally, I have 24 hours of history. Wait, but like what's your first memory of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <tell> us. <laughs> did you watch it on YouTube on that link I sent you? I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, my god! So yeah, I watched yeah. it on the YouTube link that you right, sent me as well, right, right. and I wish the fuck I had a DVD of it, oh, I mean, or even my the, VHS. Was the transfer not so good on the YouTube? Oh, it's not so good. <laughs> not so good. <laughs> not so good. Not so <laughs> Man, yeah. it was like it was like shot in eight millimeter and then blown up to thirty five or something. Wow. Like it was, it was pretty grimy. Well, if it's any consolation, look, I revisited it on the um, the Blu-ray from 2014. <laughs> Have you got the Blu-ray on? Of course I've got a Blu-ray. And That's I, the dumbest question I, you've I'm ever asked, Jared. Of course I've got. I've got I a just, day bill of this movie. And I, I also still have it on DVD. Can Okay, well, I just got to, like, yeah. what is the appeal? Because I thought it was <laughs> absolutely diabolical. I We're going to have this again, are we? Oh, I hated really every like it. single... It, this was a chore to get through. Wow. In fact, it was so bad... That when I looked at the time, like how long yep, it had been on, yep. and it was 44 minutes into a 90 minute film, it's a short film. I was ready to blow my brains out. You, you should I have watched stuck. it on Blu ray because the quality was better, but it also runs five minutes shorter. So I, it would have, would have <laughs> only had 41 minutes to go. And I stuck with it for another 15 minutes, yep. and then I stopped and I went off and made dinner. I read some of my. Because I'm just I you can't stick like with this in any the longer. You were terror? You didn't I d- carrying under a blanket or anything? I thought it was absolutely abhorrent. Right, I wish geez. this was a vodka so you could see my reaction. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have yeah, nothing he's stif- stifling in his chair here. Incredible. So what is the appeal? Like well, for, from I've both got, of you. We've got a whole like, podcast I mean, about it. <laughs> so yeah. prepare to you know, get, get ready because I'm going to sell the film to you. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's going to make you ever watch the movie again. Well, but before you do, let yeah. me just say, it's got that Charles Band stamp all mm. over it and mm. that's the appeal for me. Yeah, I mean, it does. It, but, but it's uh, terrifying too. It's fucking scary. It's creepy as fuck. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Maybe you've got a, 
Maybe you, you've grown up around mannequins. And yeah, so <laughs> but like, I generally find them quite creepy, yeah. except when they're Kim Cattrall in Mannequin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it was that. You know, but yeah. like, no. <sighs> no. No? No. All right. Well, um, look, I'll, I'll tell you about the first time I saw it. I don't remember. It was on VHS. My old man, um, I think we rented it out shortly after we moved to Queensland from Melbourne. I think it would have been about six at the time. And I think my old man, I think he had seen it before because he was quite keen to get it. My old man really wants to re-rent things he's seen previous if it wasn't amazing, if it wasn't the Evil Dead, say, yeah. or Shawshank Redemption. Um, so we, we rented it out and I fucking, I just, I just, as a, I don't know, as a six, six year old, I loved it. And I've grown up with it ever since. And it was always easy to get him back to watch that movie again. Could have been because Chuck Connors was in it and he might have grown up with like the Westerns on TV yeah, with Chuck Connors. Um, so that was like when I first saw it, but that's not my favorite. I'm going to tell you my favorite memory of seeing this film yep. is 2011. I got to see this film on 35 mil at an all night horror movie marathon in Santa Monica at the Aero Theatre where Donnie Darko and Sleepwalkers were shot, like scenes nice. were shot there. It was an all-night marathon that opened with Pet Cemetery. Throwback yep. to a preview, oh. sort of rewind and digress. Yep. Second film, Tourist Trap, amazing. And then the whatever the local power company was um, started to threaten the cinema. They were going to shut the power down. Um, like the, that grid, a couple streets, blocks yep. or whatnot. Apparently the cinema was well aware and then protesting it right up until that evening. And uh, basically they had to come in and say, you know, we promised you uh, Dustal Dawn of Movies. Well, uh, no, no more movies. So it was heartbreaking, but I did get to see Tourist Trap on the big screen. What did wow. you What did you miss? What was the one you missed? Uh, there was The Pit. Oh, really? Is, yeah. Uh, what else is it? The original Child's Play. Who did The Pit? That's someone notable. No, not, For some... not The Dead Pit. Not The oh, Dead Pit. Not the guy, the Andrew, one that did Virtual. Was that Andrew Davis or... Yeah, that's the guy that did like, like that, Hideaway yeah. and stuff. Not that guy. This was the other Pit movie. The, Brett the really Leonard. weird one with the kid where kids... He's got like the... He calls them... Uh, calls them trogs, I think the trog yeah. diets, and he yeah. feeds them. Yes, I know. That yeah, one. I know. You know the, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That one, yeah. It's a cool little film. Um, I think the original Child's Play. It might have been either that or the original Friday Night. But they're all on thirty-five. It would have been amazing. They're handing energy drinks out. It's where my stomach could tolerate. That's awesome. Drinks. It's not your typical you know, marathon. It was no. so good. And they had little bits in between every movie where it was like they'd cut together stuff like. Um, little internet memes like you know I don't know what is it is it like a, a gopher or something that's standing up there going Steve 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 yeah. Alan Alan you know oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and then like you know just all that random kind of random cool in between movies it sounds like the just, Alamo the Alamo drive yeah house. totally it was like yeah. it was like Alamo but a little less pretentious yeah. right because the crowd were or kind of you know totally grand house a uh, grand house grand house <laughs> grand house that's what I'm looking for but the seats were pretty uncomfortable I think the Astor Theatre here in Melbourne. Um, that yeah. was prior to they've done renos over the years because I went back there last year for a Sleepwalkers reunion screen, but um, yeah, it was super uncomfortable. And I remember Danny saying because Danny was with me, she was like, oh, "I don't think I can do another couple movies, <laughs> another three like, films. Oh, there's only another nine hours to go." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "We should have brought pillows." Um, so I think she was yeah, she was pretty happy that they shut it down. But I did get to see on thirty five, which was a, a hell of a treat. And there was Wicked. obviously people that were watching it for the very first time there, and they were, did know, they walk out of it as well? They were laughing at times <laughs> at maybe bits that I didn't find funny. Yeah. Um, you know, but it was yeah, it was just great to see it with a bunch of genre fans on the big screen. <laughs> Join us for the yeah. next episode of Rewind and Digress, where Jared and I talk about movies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be covering our Deadpool too. Yeah. Um, all right. So look, I'll just give anyone listening that hasn't seen the film the synopsis. This is off the back of the '88 films release, the UK release, uh, and this is what it says. It says an eerie and deserted wax museum, Slawson's Lost Oasis. Not really a wax museum, though. And it's it? not really eerie either. It, I'd say it's eerie. It's incredibly it's definitely eerie. eerie. Is it? But yeah. they're not wax. They're like they're like what do they call those uh, mechanized sort of? Um, but they're kind of ceramic. They're kind things. of ceramic because they kind of yeah. shatter and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I guess sculpted yeah. or... Yeah, anyway. Uh, Slauson's Lost Oasis is the site for spine-tingling terror where four unsuspecting young travellers, including Tanya Roberts from Charlie's Angels and A View to Kill, allude into a very deadly tourist trap. Slauson, Chuck Connors from Soylent Green, is a reclusive and bizarre owner of this attraction, which is actually more like a macabre chamber of horrors. The grotesque and frightening mannequins in this sordid sideshow are only the beginning of the murderous mayhem and nightmarish madness to come. That's a pretty reasonable yeah. explanation. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't until I watched it again last night, having had such a distance between my viewings, that I realised how bloody influenced House of a Thousand Corpses was for this one. Oh, totally. Because I originally yeah. thought House of a Thousand Corpses, it's all Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but no, it's like it's completely yeah. this, which obviously is also influenced yeah. by Ma Chainsaw Massacre, but hell, this is like Rob Zombie territory. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's, like, uh, it's like a slightly tidier 
white trash movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did I watch the same film? You did. Did you watch the one with the mannequins, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just making sure. The one, the one I sent you the link for. The, the, where, <laughs> where the main, the, the main. I was I actually guess. genuinely worried he may have watched the wrong movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like where the main, I guess, um, mannequin character is very similar to Leatherface from Next mm. Generation. Yeah, that was that was yeah. the, and that was the that was the one from from my mind that was the one redeeming yeah. um, sequence. You is didn't when find that incredibly chilling, like watching that image. No, no. <laughs> I no. did. Oh wow! I, I mean, like the, it was the one part that I found tolerable in the film is when um, he's down in the basement and he's 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 where he's like my my brother doesn't you know, oh, like, yeah, you know that yeah. sequence you know where he's yeah. like he's like where he's Davy yeah and he drops the key and he you know the guy tries to get it with his foot and he can't yeah. and he's and he's speaking all this weird you know style like you know like I'm like okay like this is this is okay like if we get more of this this is this will be good and then it stopped and I'm like okay we're back to nothing again again Damn. well look in defense of Sean there's, it's a very jarring mm. film in sense of like mm. the style switches a yeah. lot like yeah. from that. Charles Band quirkiness to yep. that Toby Hooper terror, yeah, like it yeah. does bounce very. Yeah. Um, it's very abrupt. Mm. abrupt. It, it's yeah. It's this very it's strange, sharp. Yeah. You yeah. kind of have that backwards type horror film, and then you've also got this very sort of Silence of the Lambs kind of yeah. almost weird sort of. But even then, I felt like, and you guys will obviously disagree, but I felt like that weird backwardsy thing. I'm just like, mm. okay, like I, I, we've seen like how many times have we seen this? We've but seen this a hundred thousand times. A you know? And and then, this is the precursor to a lot of those. It's those just films. like the characters have nothing to do. They're just searching for things to do. Like you know, no, we're well, just watching just wanna, them do so nothing. Get that like prepared and head home. Other than Chainsaw Massacre, there wasn't a lot of this kind no. of story around at the time. Like you had The Hills Have Eyes, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. yeah, But this was still a very sort of new kind of thing. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Mm. Maybe I'm missing context. So. So, so perhaps what is what is the context of the well this film? film was released in 79 but I believe it was shot around 77 so pre probably around the same time as Hills of Eyes you know post Texas Chainsaw yeah um, I forgot how old it is 79 yeah and 79, it was theatrically yeah. released in 79 so that just I had a bit of my point distribution like, issues there wasn't much like it at the time yeah no no it really yeah predated a lot of a lot of the films like even the slasher films that would have come out like I will touch on themes later but Obviously, one of the themes is, you know, if you have sex, you'll get killed, which kind of was more established with Halloween, but this film should have come out before Halloween. You know, it yeah. was made before Halloween, and it was the same distributor. It had no knowledge of Halloween when I was right. No, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because when, when was Halloween? 77? 79. 79? 78. 78, sorry. Yeah, 78. Right, gotcha. Um, but yeah, this shot before, and then Compass International distributed both films, but Compass International pushed Halloween out to audiences first. Um, but yeah, look, casting, we mentioned Chuck Connors before, plays Mr. Slauson. Uh, he was famous for Westerns throughout the 50s and 60s TV. Yeah, he, he was one of the, he was one of the, the big ones. The, the boys. The right he was man. one, of, yeah, 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 yeah. He was in Branded too, another short run sort of Western series that was actually created by Larry Cohen. Yeah, right. Interestingly enough. And Glenn, I guess you might know him well from Old Yeller, from the yeah. Disney film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, look, he, he just nails the role, I think, because he was trying to do something against type for him. You know, he'd long played those roles and obviously he'd gotten too old for those roles. So he wanted to do something a little different. So he uh, he didn't leave the cowboy hat too far, though, because I think he walks in, the first time you see him walk into this movie, he's wearing a cowboy he's hat. He's got a swagger. And a rifle. And yeah. you're like, oh, okay. I can't think of too many examples, but I know they exist. But mm. it, it's, that era, there was a lot of these classic actors coming into these really weird, surreal horror films. Yeah. Like um, what's the chicken forbidden zone? Oh, I can't remember her oh, name, but that you know the older woman the, that gets uh, her tits out. Oh, I was going to say the larger lady, um, uh, not that one. Anyway, yeah. she was a very credible sort of Hollywood starlet in right. her time, and she came and did that. And then I guess Donald Pleasance and Halloween. Yeah, but I'm talking really quick. Yeah, something oh, that are a little, yeah. little bit. Well, for yeah, example, even the the cook in um, Chainsaw Massacre, like he was yeah. a stage thespian before yeah. this, and now all of a sudden he's a zany character. But that era yeah. was full of those kind of moments where older actors that have sort of left the are scene are looking to reinvent themselves. Yeah, and they came something. back in weird ways like this. Yeah. Well, uh, old. Uh, Chuck Connors he, he's got like kind of got two roles in the film like yeah. there's that whole duality between playing Slauson but then also playing the Davy character and something I want to touch on again I guess I'm racing ahead about themes is that it's unusual but looking at the film now obviously you've got that whole you know you've got that transvestite character in Texas Chainsaw Massacre and I say transvestite because 
he's he is definitely more feminine. Yeah. Whereas this character, it's really odd when he puts the Davy outfit on, he can be feminine or he can be a man. He's got one of the mannequin masks with the sideburns. It's almost like he's like this kind and of the top hat. You know, in the top yeah, and the yeah. top hat. It's like he's like kind of like a non binary villain. It's kind of no, weird. He is. You know, he like, adopts the persona. Isn't like, it weird that yeah. gender neutrality thing? But it was like an odd thing. Um, but yeah, no, it's a it's a strange. It's kind of this strange non binary killer role. And also, you know, it's not totally a slasher. It's like a cross slasher backwards type, you know, movie. But it, you've got a killer that actually talks as well, and supernatural, obviously. As yeah. Well, yeah. But he, he talks, weird dialogue. You know, it's, weird it's dialogue. Very strange. Yeah. It is very weird dialogue. Strange. Oh, little girl, and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's so odd. Like uh, Chuck Connors did an incredible job with this role. Who would have thought? You know, and he still plays the nice guy. Like he can really identify with the Slauson character, mm. and the Davy character is just all creepy. <laughs> um, we mentioned before that uh, Tanya Roberts is in it. She went on to Charlie's Angel, Few to Kill. One of That's my favourites, so um, Don Coscarelli's uh, the Beastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> she was in. Wasn't she the, the wasn't she the bimbo in that seventies show? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the mother was it? Yeah, she was like the next door neighbours, the, the 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 girlfriend's mum. Yeah, and yeah. She, she was she, like pretty much in that entire series. Yeah, she was just a she was a complete diss. She she did it so well. Like she was hilarious. Did you note? Uh, did you notice who um, edited the film? No, no. Ted Nicolau, who was the director of. Bad Channels, Magic in the Water, wow. Terror Vision, and Subspecies. Oh, really? So he was on the, Stuck around was on the, the full, full Moon, moon roster yeah. for there. The Empire and Full Moon. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he edited this one. This is obviously where he got his kickstart with okay. the company. Who scored it? Because the score was oh, quite the score, score was, was quite phenomenal. worthwhile. Weird, like, weirdly mismatched, but in a good way. Oh, yeah. It works. Oddly it's jarring. Weird, yeah. It's a weird juxtaposition, the two. Um, Pino DiNaggio, who did, yeah, right. like, De Palma films. You know, yeah. Yeah. Harry? I know the name. I yeah. wouldn't be able to put the title. He actually to did um, the score for the Patrick remake. Did he? Oh, really? Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. Isn't that weird? There you go. We were just talking. We about were just talking about off air. Um, but yeah, I you know like the score. Fuck, I love the score. It's like really whimsical and unsettling. It's so strange and offbeat. And because you hear those opening notes of the score right at the beginning of the film, it really sort of sets the scene. It's the opening that really makes it. It jars you right from the get go. It is. It's, it's totally is. And actually, there's a scene towards the start, which I found hilarious, where they're sort of skinny dipping in the lake. Yes. And I want to get your perspective, having mm. seen it in sort of a better definition of what yeah, we you've did. you've seen nothing. You've no, still because, seen nothing. No, 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 I'm not. No, no right, okay. That's where you're like, focused <laughs> on. <laughs> no, no, but it's in high def. Get your head out the gutter, dude. <laughs> if you look at it, like, it's... it's yeah. the, pans out and you got this scene of sort of a dry arid land with this like fake grass and fake plastic mm. trees and fake moss and yeah. shit like that and it's, yeah, it's yeah. the most it's paradise abs- it's the most absurd it scene ever and then, <laughs> then you've got that music over it which is just making it this <laughs> that's it <laughs> if you can only see my hands right now I don't know what I'm doing I'm yeah, yeah, operating some conducting, strange con- I thought you were, I thought you were conducting <laughs> yeah, 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 I am it, conducting but it does feel good um, crazy score actually it's good that you brought that up because you know, Pino's a you know a, a famous artist, and in this point in his career, he's been doing De Palma films, been doing big films, and they kind of just lucked out getting him. He um, he was in the states to do the score for Piranha, yeah, right, and because Joe couldn't speak Italian, uh, and David was you know uh, spoke Italian and English fluently. He acted as an interpreter for the two, so helped you know Joe work with Pino on Piranha, and he kind of spoke to him about doing this film. Yep. Um, the only thing was the budget of this film was three hundred thousand dollars, but he agreed to do the film for fifty thousand dollars. So a seventh of the budget Jeez. is actually wow. the score, the film, and they yeah Charlie Band brokered the deal and he ended up doing the score for the film. So the fifty grand included you know composition, all the you know artists to perform the music and that. But um, yeah, they lucked out with that. I mean, it's one of those standout features. It's really creepy. It score. absolutely is. Yeah, I've, it's one of those ones. Like I, I do get a lot of scores on vinyl. Mm. And as much as I love that score, I just don't think I could listen to it without the film because it's just too wacky. It's like I've got Greasy Strangler on vinyl, yeah. And putting it on, it's it's you know it's fine to listen to one track, but when you listen to the whole soundtrack, and I agree. Without the visuals, it's just too Go, going much. back going back to, to, to another fiction mm. podcast, the Candyman one. It's the same thing. Like I I will listen to Philip Glass's yeah. score, but I get and, and it, it can contextually inside the film it makes the film like much deeper richer all that but I just I can't get through six minutes of it and listen yeah. to it my headphones it just doesn't yeah some, it doesn't some work just yeah. without the film <laughs> yeah some of these scores just don't work don't work and yeah. if they're particularly wacky like this one so yeah I've held off by it I mean it's, it looks fantastic like it's yeah. amazing artwork and I'll probably if I pick it up cheap one day I'll just buy the bullet and it'll just sit on the shelf 
<laughs> um, it's not like it'll lose value because I'm sure there's a lot of diehard fans out there like me that you know, if I choose to part with it. Um, going back to casting, I'm going to mention it's probably more production design because, I mean, you don't really cast a car, mm. but a fucking interesting choice of car that I only noticed for the very first time going back and watching this. Yeah. The little Jeep at the start. Yeah. Did you and know the, what that is? It's a Volkswagen thing. Um, oh, the have thing. you watched? It was on Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. yes. On, on getting uh, comedians in Kim car, cars. getting yeah. coffee with um, Zach Galifianakis. Yes. He goes and picks him up in the Volkswagen thing. So I had seen this thing over time, but I had not realised it Didn't was a click. thing. And then when I watched the Tourist Trap, I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding. I just watched that episode a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Um, if anyone that doesn't know what this vehicle is, it's a recreational vehicle you could use to take to the beach or on the Le Ventures or whatnot, but it's actually from World War II. It's like... Oh, German Nazi. You know, <laughs> yeah. Nazi transportation. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty wacky. Like it is cool. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's a, it's it's a like, retro cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they sort of talked it down on, on the, the Seinfeld program, but it did actually, they, they manufactured it from 68 through to about 83, Yeah, you know, into into the US. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. It was bigger that's than cool what they was, was a market It's a pretty good it. run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I just thought that was interesting. I, I, I'd touch on that. Um, trivia, Jack Palance was actually considered for the role. And I can see that. Yeah. yeah. The director actually met with um, with Jack to do it, and uh, they spoke about it, but then he ultimately turned it down. So, he had issues yeah. with lots of movies that he's turned down. He had big bone of contention with um, Natural Born Killers. Right. He was right. originally going to be Tommy Lee Jones's character, and oh, really? pulled out at late notice yeah, right. just because of the content. It's like, did you read the script? Did I you know. get? Which is no. weird because Jack Palance was always in violent films. Yes, like, he was. You know, like, even he was even in... when he was budgeting over to. Italy and all that. And like not his... long after this one came out, he did Alone in the Dark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super violent. Yeah. But what a cast. Yeah. Jesus. Martin Landau, Donald Pleasant. Yeah. Pick Fantastic cast. That would be a great one to revisit <laughs> sooner or later. Would, totally. Um, another little bit of trivia, because I, I like to bring up the bits of trivia that I, I gather from the audio commentary that you don't read on IMDb, that this generally isn't on a Wikipedia And page. that we wouldn't know, because we yeah. don't listen to yeah, this commentary. Exactly. Well, because... Sean's definitely not going to know any of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to hear the trivia, though. Finding out these factoids gives him a deeper appreciation of the film. He goes, fuck, maybe it is all right. I'm maybe it is, yeah, I'm going to have to try it. could have had Jack yeah. Palance in it. Maybe it would have been better. But maybe the big right. mistake was YouTube. Maybe the big mistake's yeah. just with me. There obviously seems to be a big market for it. There obviously seems to be a big fan base. Well, that's the funny thing like it's one of those sort of horror films i grew up with that you know when you talk to other horror fans maybe they'd heard of it it was a, it was pretty obscure until it kind of came out on dvd yeah. and found an audience again um but i found an article on the internet that was really interesting about how the film's ne- it's it's been a cult film but never really found a massive fan base until now and they said like in the last five years or so this film is really popular with millennials. Yeah. And I just, I read the whole article, blew my mind. I'm that's, like, yeah, that's exactly whoa. what yeah. Fred Decker was saying on that Mick Garris interview about yeah. Monster yeah. Squad. That's that, true. And yeah. Night of Creeps. Yeah. He had no idea for 20 years that there was an audience for this. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. So your trivia. Uh, okay, so the, uh, the you know, the at the start where you've got all the, uh, I want to call them something else. What do they call those robots? Like the ones in um, Hugo. Automatons? Yeah, they kind of tell it on. Yeah, Westworld, kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally like that. Anyway, they are all uh, mimes. They hired mimes to play the role. There are scenes where you can see that. Movements. Yeah, you when can see like that. When he fires the gun, yeah, yeah. you totally. can see the arm movement, which is cool and really unsettling. I really enjoyed that masks. though because it kind of it, it plays into that supernatural element that was alluded to yeah. within the characters. Mm. Yeah. It's a surreal movie. Yeah, yeah it's it just is such really a bizarre weird. and unsettling film. Um, I know you've only seen it once, Sean, but was there any standout scenes for you? Well, like like I said, the, the yeah. one in, in the basement where he's talking. Yeah. About the I wish I could remember the dialogue, <laughs> but it was it was the one time in the film where I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Like right. this has got interesting now. Yeah. You know this guy. The, well, the it's, mask. It's interesting and too because like the real time you first time you really hear Davy talk properly. Yeah, and and the th- you know the, he's he's talking like he owns this situation, but it looks like he's being owned, like he's being kept downstairs, locked away. Yeah, but he's always like my. Brother. He's always like you know my my brother doesn't you know like me doing these things, and yeah. you know like his, <laughs> you know like you know he's he's smart enough to kill, but he's not smart enough to be upstairs. Like it's this kind of weird. Mm. And that was a f- th- those kind of weird juxtapositions. Um, that was the first time I thought, oh, okay, like this is. We're but starting he's, to I guess touch he's on schizophrenic. You yeah. know, he's kind of these two people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, by, by that time, you don't realize it, though. No, no, of course. Actually, because, yeah, uh, that's the weirdest thing. Rewatching it this time was like when Tanya Roberts jumps back into the car with Thorson later. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? And you're like, oh, that's right. She doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, 
did you know? Like, was it really obvious? Surely that's I, a, I, it's I, obvious that it's. The I was going to say pretty it, early in the piece. It, it did strike my well, mind. I, 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 it didn't come as much of a surprise. We're a much savvier audience these days. Yeah. Back then, I don't think people would have clued on quite as much. Yeah, yeah. I don't know because yeah. I just don't, re- like I don't the remember audience, what I thought as like a kid. Like the audience you know? was psycho, wouldn't have seen it coming. You know, like no, yeah, it's right. the kind of thing where yeah, you true. just weren't. Your mind wasn't in that place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how I would see it. Interesting. What about you, Glenn? Any particular favourite scenes? It's not really favourite scenes. I mean, they're all yeah, It's a bit creepy. of a weird one. But what, yeah. what strikes me about this one is, I will agree with Sean, it's a very slow burn kind of film. Mm. Like, it does meander and it takes a long time to get to its point. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, they just wrap it up at the end. They just kill him and they're in the car yeah. and off they go. Like, pretty good, just pretty stops. good death yeah. scene. <laughs> no, but yeah, but that final yes, shot right. when she's so driving it, Yeah, but, but it's just yeah. like the movie, it's going, it's going, it's going, it stops. Yeah. Like, they just yeah. kill him and then off she goes. And yeah. she drives away in, in the thing with yeah. all the mannequins of her all friends. All friends. <laughs> it's such a good shot. And yeah. she just looks so, like, fucking... Deranged, changed, yeah. deranged, yeah. changed forever. And that's the classic trope, I guess, of those yeah. movies. It's always that getaway shot. You know, right. like, yeah. you know yeah. change the mask and do that. And good stuff. freeze frame at the yeah. end, roll credits. I wouldn't say it's a good freeze frame. But <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty it's fucking a grainy, frame. but they got it somewhat. Like, it looks pretty in focus. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. They really pulled focus fast. Well, not, not on YouTube. <laughs> There's no, no on focus. YouTube was, there was like, no focus in the whole film. <laughs> looking at that shot, because I'm like, geez, a, that's a tight shot. Yeah, it was appalling on YouTube. Was it really that oh, bad? It was yeah. like watching it with Vaseline on your glasses. Like, yeah. yeah. Really it was like watching it hammered drunk, trying to stay awake at three in the morning. Shit, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I should have like worked probably, out another no, no, no. way for you guys to watch it. You probably saw the YouTube link on your phone and it looked really I nice think, and yeah, tight. Yeah, I think I, I must have looked at it and it was so small. I was like, geez, that looks tight. Yeah. <laughs> Send that to the boys. Was it at least in widescreen or was it in 4.3? No, it was in widescreen. How old is that? But I'm watching on, I've got a 72 inch. Yeah. So I'm oh, watching God, on a 72 yeah. inch. Yeah. And yeah. It was Same, like, it was huge. Yeah. It would be yeah. unforgiving. It was huge. Yeah. To but say it, the no, least. it made me want to buy the Blu-ray. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Well, because I, I, but I have fond memories of it. Yeah, so. I will. Uh, I will actually discuss uh, a little bit about the Blu-ray when we when we wrap it up. But I just want to tell you my favorite scene. My favorite scenes when Davey's pursuing um, Molly through the woods, and um, he's got the the severed head of uh, Woody. Oh yeah, and he just raises it up, and it just goes. <laughs> this is like fucking terrifying yeah. moment because it still fucks with things. I'm yeah. like, is he a ventriloquist? What is this? This is supernatural. It's just super surreal. Yeah. And I still can't quite make my mind up. I'm like, obviously there's a element, or is it in his head? Like Tanya Roberts, she when the mannequins are falling on her, she sees them crowd her oh. and move around and shuffle and yeah. And it's just too much going on. I, I know, actually yeah. burst out laughing when all the mannequins fell on her. I really and she, like and that she, And she, you know, she's like all dazed and confused. I, yeah. I actually burst out laughing. I'm like, yeah. is that all it's going to take? <laughs> like, yeah. 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 You know, I don't, I don't often call for remakes, but I think this would serve very well as a remake. I agree. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, with, a, with the right director, maybe, the right the, maybe who did um, the, the Maniac remake? Oh, um, the P2 guy. Oh, Frank. Yeah, Frank yes. something. That's why I like yeah. K. K. Give yeah. this film that sensibility in a yeah. remake, and I think you're on the on a winner. I yeah, agree. I want to see. Actually, yeah. it's funny. You even you do mention Maniac because this predates Maniac, and you yeah. have that whole interplay with the mannequins, and even toward the end when you know he's axed. Yeah, has a great death scene. Yeah, like his death scene's great. On the commentary track, they weren't quite sure how he was going to do it because they hadn't really rehearsed it. And so he did it, and they managed to get it all in the one take, and oh, really? stayed, yeah, on him. And it's a great death scene; like it's actually really quite convincing. Um, but yeah, with the mannequin sort of yeah. surrounding, it's very, you know, uh, maniac finale as such. Do you know I've never seen Maniac? Wow, you're in for a treat when you do. Never, I haven't seen either one of them. Yeah, it's a strange movie. I, the I, remake's I, solid too. Oh, uh, this remake. I, I hear the remake like is the really remake good. better than the original, but they're very different. It's got a lot of. Yeah. It's got the repeat value. The the remake, like you can go yeah, back to it. Totally. Very clever. Yeah. And it, it's different. The first one's very. Um, it'll be weird you watching it now too with the climate of cinema and everything that's transpired in the forty odd years since it's been made, thirty eight years, um, because it's it's very misogynist. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's hell very, yes. it's yeah. very. It's all about a sleazy. guy who can't it's pull chicks, and he so he goes and murders chicks. You and know? yeah, and he, he falsifies who he is. Yeah, like he's very and, fraudulent and, and, as a an incel photographer. Yeah, and, yeah. No, they, that's and it's a, just, he's got yeah, like there's mummy issues, and it's just. It's but that really all that all exists in the remake too, and that's oh, no, contemporary. Yeah, it's it's some yeah, I don't know. There's some there's a class about the remake. I don't know. It's all the first, first one's very first sleazy. Point of view, first person point of view. The the um the remake. So I hear yeah. Which is like, yeah, I, going. I saw it at Miff, and I didn't know that going in. So I was like, oh, if I'd known this device, would have I been yeah. here as fast? But then I left the. But then you realise it actually is Elijah Wood because when he looks in the mirror, yeah, and like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's very clever. Yeah. 
because <clears throat> the, the the other point of view one that I watched was uh, Hardcore Henry. Oh yeah, still haven't seen. It. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that it's is a torturous. Trial. That's a trial. It's a shame. Isn't oh, it? I like, enjoyed it, but it is it's arduous. It's very arduous. Yeah, I mean, like the, the the short that it was based on that that ten minute short yeah. that did the rounds. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, holy moly, that's. But it doesn't. It doesn't work. Pulled out to to. 80, it would work if you had minutes. a VR. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um. So the writer director David Schmuller, he was the screenwriter and director responsible for the first Puppet Master film, for Charlie Band's 1989 Puppet Master, which is um, quite good. Yeah, no, it definitely has its merits, and it has that. But old you can guy see Puppet like Master it. in this. Well, see, that's what I was going to say. That old guy from um, Forget Paris and from um, yeah, what's his Monkey name? Trouble. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. He plays. Like, was it Dorian? You or whatever his name is the you character. Got Dorian or something. Boy, oh, yeah. That guy. See that? See, because yes. because when I think of Charles Band. Puppet Master is a thing I think of. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, and I, I, uh, for some, uh, there's just some disconnect where I just I can't see the similarities between this in Charles Band's catalog. Ch- well, if you look at some of the Empire stuff, I mean, it all's all is pretty pretty similar, with the exception of maybe this movie. Because yeah, look, there's not a great deal of humour in Tourist Trap as opposed to a lot of the other Charlie Band Empire stuff or Full Moon. There's oh, always I more of a sense of humour. I think there's heaps. I think there's a there's a subversive yeah. sort of sense of humor about it, but I think some of the more of the other empire oh, it has got gags. a bit more it has got gags. Yeah, that that stuff's a bit more blatant. So I, I guess that's the kind of yeah. Because no, to but think it's of a it's, a, it's a film you film. can kind of, you can yeah. pinpoint. This is like the origin of where Charles Brand took his brand. Yeah, you know, because yeah. of the whole the, the puppet thing turned oh, the that's like the mannequin thing turns into puppets. You mm. know, with puppet master yeah. and and then he did like. Bad channels and doll, like doll, yeah. man. doll man, like he he's yeah. fascinated by this, yeah. I guess toyish kind of yeah. childlike yeah. atmosphere. And that's the thing that's scary about this one is that the mannequins like they're very toyish. They're like little china dolls, you know. Totally, and, yeah. and, and yeah. You know, there's a lot of innocence. Speaking of like kid friendly, it's got a PG mm. rating. Well, common mistake. But yeah. yes, PG in the states. Yeah, which that's is what I mean. Why they think sank it, you know, because people wanted to see R-rated horror. Um, but the weird thing is, though, I am convinced to this present day, because the yes, S-Object Classification Board, it was passed as an M for theatrical and M for home video. Daybill says M, but I am fucking 100% convinced that the actual original video cover actually All had right. a US Set rating a challenge. PG on Set it. Set the challenge really? if I've anyone has got that, an original yeah. R-rated version of Tourist Trap. Tourist Trap. And whack, take it a on our, yeah. whack it on the comment yeah. section of our Facebook post for this podcast. Yes, PG, PG rated, or whether it's M, one or the other. It wouldn't surprise me if it was yeah. PG. It really yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, that's because I don't, I, I don't just, think... Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe they used the US art and it ended up on the... Somehow ended up on the Aussie video jacket. Because PG films can be quite creepy. I give you The Witches, right? Mm. For a PG rated film, that, that conjures a, a great deal of atmosphere. Mm. It's, it's scary. You know, it's scary for kids. It's even scary for adults. You know, like... So it wouldn't surprise me if this did get a PG because there's nothing really again, explicit you've got a in it. Separating them, like it's a true oh, yeah. sensibility. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree, but there's the, what, what I'm saying is that there's the possibility that it could have been rated a PG. Well, yeah. in America, it definitely would have been. It, PG, it definitely yeah, was. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that was because that would have been before the introduction of the PG thirteen. And the famous rating. story of um, yeah. Chainsaw Massacre almost being PG if they had rated it based on what's on screen, but yeah, it was the intensity, the intensity, the intensity. Yeah. intensity yeah. That, and this one, I would say maybe the intensity drove it. Yeah, to you know. Fans thought it was much more totally. terrifying. The, in, totally. the intensity, the intensity is st- stuck a problem with horror for the longest time, isn't it? Because didn't when Wes Craven did Scream back in '95 and he put it through the ratings board, didn't he have to go through like 14 different cuts or something? And he he took out all the blood. And on his last trial, you know, when he went through, that was you know what he said. They're going, nah, you got to cut it down. He says, there's nothing left to cut down. I can't. And that's mm-hmm. when they say they said, no, it's not the blood, it's the intensity. You got to yeah. cut down the yeah. intensity. Yeah. And that's uh, yeah, that's where Scream ended up. So you put the blood back in, try to take out the intensity. Intensity makes the horror film. That's exactly, the that's, that's the like, best yeah, part of it. That's the strength of a film. That's yeah. the strength of a director. Yeah, if you can achieve that. Look at high tension. It's yeah. predicated on that idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, also, the director David Schmuller, he is responsible for one of my favorite Klaus Kinski films uh, from the mid eighties. Ah, I know the one you mean. Yes, Crawl, Crawl Space. Space. Yeah. Crawl Space, absolute classic. Well, there, there was I had a, like a Region Four DVD release yes. of Crawl Space that went for sixty minutes. Oh, Whereas what? I look it up, it says like 70 minutes, 80 minutes. Yeah, or it's something. a short one. It's yeah, about 70 odd minutes. I could swear yeah. the back of the jacket says 60 minutes. Because you know what? Because like, the 
Take the credits out, and that's probably all it is. Well, it could be PAL, so it could have sped it up by yeah, you know, true. running at 25 frames as opposed to 24, so it would speed the film I, up. I assume you don't have the disc anymore? No. Right. It might only be like 72 minutes. So it could have very well fallen down 67 or I sold that one yeah. at the Fitzroy Film Fair. There you Did go. you really? Yes. Uh, classic, classic film. Um, then there's an interesting backstory about the director having worked with Klaus Kinski on how, how much trouble he was. You know, I mean, he's... Intolerable. Absolutely. And he made a documentary in, I think it was like 1999, that's on the Crawl Space Blu-ray, the US Blu-ray, but you can actually watch it on YouTube. I sent you the link. Please it don't. actually looks yeah. all right. I mean, <laughs> it's not that bad. It um, runs in about eight minutes and it just talks about his experience of having worked with Klaus on the film. It is fucking hilarious. And it, it's, he's directed it, um, David the director, and he's on camera talking about the whole experience. And it is just, it is hilarious. Next level. Yeah, it's really, really funny. Um, yeah, and I mean, if you're a Klaus Kinski fan, and, mm. then you should probably read his autobiography because that's fucking mental as well. Is it? It is insane. Everything's super sexualized and... It's just, it's the <laughs> ramblings of a, a pure madman. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great stories about how crazy he is. There's a lot of horrible stories about some potentially awful things that he did, particularly with his um, children. Yeah. Um, but this book is just madness. It's an autobiography, and it's just like how much of it's truth and how much of it's just um, pure fantasy. I don't yeah, know. Deranged it's, musings. It's fucking yeah. amazing. It like sounds, it is, it sounds... It's a stunning read. If they should make that into a movie, they couldn't. It'd be a HBO series, and yeah, I don't know if you could even. Who would play HBO? Kinski. Oh dear God, who would you get? Defoe. Well, I'd, there's already he's already done the. He's um, already Shadow yeah, of a Vampire. Yeah, yeah. has dude. to be. Yeah, has to be someone probably a bit with a little bit more, a little bit more youth. Who yeah, though? Yeah. It's a good don't question. Know. It sounds like uh, Joe Esther has his biography, Hollywood Animal. Have you read that? No. You know, Joe Esther has. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Holy Screen animal. Writer, yeah, 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 yeah. Showgirls? Next level stuff. Like That would be a great. That is that great off great the read. chain. That Like, it's a solid book. It's about What's 700 it pages. Hollywood Animal. Hollywood you can pick it. Yeah. You can get it in Booktopia yeah, or something for yeah, $10 yeah. or something. But it's so worthwhile. Like, the stories this guy tells you, because he's, he's Hungarian, you know, World War II, and his family fled from, you know, blah, blah. And he talks about all that. And then he, as soon as he gets to Hollywood, it's just, it's bonkers man like it's oh, so man it's, i want to read it actually yeah. sounds like a yeah. solid it is brain. absolutely because i mean he's obviously famous for basic instinct and mm. showgirls and mm. jade and all these psychosexual thrillers and the people he was hanging around with and the the, the, the deals that had to be swung and the the, the cocaine parties and wow. you know how people tried to persuade him you know send and run lingerie models you know like to deliver yeah. handwritten notes from studio executives and like and that's that's as mild as it gets. Like it is. Next. Hello, me too. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes, it wow. is. God, yeah, next different level. Era. Yeah, next level stuff. Wow, bonkers. There'll never be another era like it. No. I think. Yeah. Um, I guess it's probably time to wrap it up. But I generally talk about the home ant releases in the wrap up. In this instance, I mentioned earlier that there is a Blu-ray release. There's two Blu-ray releases. There's um the 88 films release in the UK, and then there is the Full Moon Entertainment release in the US. Pretty much the same. Do they have the, the same, same cover special up? features? Yes. The, uh, the cover the is cool. Films yeah. has reversible sleeve and the reversible sleeve is that really great poster yeah. art, uninterrupted, I don't think there's any logos or anything on it. It's terrific. Um, the 88 films one's at a high bit rate for yeah. the visuals um, and in terms of the audio, it's got like a lossless audio track as opposed to lossy audio that is on the full moon entertainment release. Um, they all have the same special features. The 88 Films one has a nice little booklet with notes by Callum Waddell. It's a pretty cool, little interesting read. Um, but here's the kicker with both releases. They're both from the same master. Master is five minutes shorter than any other version of Tourist Trap that's ever existed. Uh, be it in theatres, video, YouTube. DVD. Oh, probably, yeah. I'd say YouTube because I reckon that's from the 1999 DVD. The five minutes are missing from the film and... Uh, the director hadn't noticed because he he was um, he on his own dime recorded an audio commentary for it and got an interview recorded. Um, he was just happy to participate with the release. Does the audio commentary match? Like oh, he, the time he difference? recorded no 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 he recorded the commentary to the high def release okay, yeah sure. so he was unaware until someone brought up the fact that hang on this is shorter you know mm. run shorter and this is what's missing. Thank God. And that's when he's <laughs> been told that he probably hadn't watched it for a while no doubt, and that's when he's gone. Well, I'll reach out to Charlie Van and find out because he, he looked after it all and Charlie Van's like, oh, no, 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 this is the only version of the film. And then eventually he admitted, 
Oh, well, look, no, it's what we access from the lab. David, do you know any more about it? David's like, I've had nothing to do with the print, man. It's all on you. And he's like, well, look, I can't say, you know, like maybe something happened in the lab and, you know. Classic Charlie. Oh, Charlie oh, Bears tried it yeah. night. But the funny thing too is he'd all, like, with all the salesmanship, because he is a salesman, is that, you know, struck from the original negative and all that sort of bullshit. He's Does a it. charlatan. Yeah, he's, he's a charlatan. He's a huckster. There's this guy that was, um, I can't actually remember his name, but the guy that was post-production supervisor at Full Moon Entertainment when they first released Tourist Trap to DVD in 1999 under um, Colt Video. He, um, he's a filmmaker now, but he came out and said, I, I supervised the transfer back in 99 for the DVD release of Tourist Trap. That was from the original negative, and I've seen the Blu-ray. They're completely different prints. Oh, yeah. He goes, this is some international print or one that was prepared for TV. Yep. It's film and it's been transferred from 35, sure, but it's not from the original negative. So, you know, Charlie Bench being shot down that it's not from the original negative or whatnot. Who knows where the five minutes Well, that's what I was going to say. Then, then where, where is the five minutes and or where is the original print? Well, yeah, that's it. Well, the, his theory about the original print is a, is a perfect Charlie Band story. Is He thinks that... Charlie Band hasn't paid the lab that's holding it yep. and so he can't get it out because he hasn't paid his lab bills <laughs> so they're holding it so he's accessed another print because this yeah. is what he can get a hold of it's weird too because look it's yeah, it's missing five minutes but in a roundabout way it's some scenes are slightly longer in this version some are shorter there's slightly alternate shots so clearly this was like does it affect the outcome version. of the film do you reckon? absolutely not yeah. I don't think if you if you don't own this film in any format, yep. you should buy the Blu-ray because it's yep. pretty much the film. It yep. doesn't matter. You're not missing anything. If you don't, if you own the DVD, hold on to the DVD, yeah. and uh, you know Charles Band does words. those things. It doesn't expect people to catch on. He's, when he did the VHS releases and so said dodgy. they're like authentic, you know, I found yeah, 500 you know video covers in my bloody warehouse, yeah. you know, from the 80s, and I'm going to sell them, but I don't have the tapes. <laughs> yeah, but then that was proven they were all newly photoshopped. They were all newly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the other he, one I like too is he. Uh, someone them. went up to him at like a convention and had sculpted a Ghoulies, yeah. you know, statue for him. Check it, he's saying it's a present for you. And Charlie loved it, loved it so much that he went and got five hundred of them made, um, replicated, <laughs> you know, without this guy's permission or anything to consent, and then sold them. Yeah, yeah, Charlie Man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's a mercenary. And to think he's my horror hero. He's great, man. Yeah. Like he's, he's like the. He's, we need charlatans in the yeah, film he world. Totally is. He's, he's like Uncle Lloyd, but like Uncle Lloyd. More shameless. Uncle Lloyd exploits people. Yeah, but he's not a crook. Charlie Band's a crook, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, lads, I think that's really it. Uh, Shauno, will you be running out and buying the Blu-ray? Look, probably not, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> but I think you know this conversation's given me a bit of context and whatnot. That yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, hell or high water try and find a better copy, one way or another. Yeah. Revisit it, see if that makes a difference. Maybe watch it by myself with the lights out. You know, see if I can yeah. conjure some of that magic. Crank the sound. There's up. obviously something there that I'm not getting. It could be because of the bad transfer. Yeah, I doubt it, but <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Uh, give it another go and uh, watch this space. I'll get back to you. Easy. It's good stuff. Excellent. Well, all right, lads. Quick shout out to the Screaming Meanies who do our intro and outro music. Thank you very much. And if you enjoy the Screaming Meanies music on our intro and outro, you can check out his Bandcamp page. And uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. Sir. you.